they should let us sing the Frank Sinatra song. I, I did it my way, you know, <laughs> Cisco your way. One of the things that makes Charlotte special is we have a ton of diversity in the area. Whether you're downtown in the financial district where things are busier and often a little more high end, up in the Noda area where there's tons of great breweries, pizza restaurants, all kinds of establishments, or down here where we are right now in South End. The crowds just come out. It's crazy when there's a nice, beautiful day out like today. Lots of customers. One of the challenges because of pandemic is really everything became very expensive. Our main product, the ingredients are not available. Also, being small, we don't have a lot of capacity to stock a lot of items. We have something pop up or if we're running out of something, you have to try to run to the store and you know, that's taking up valuable time. The fresh product, the produce, we have to get every day. We sell tons of collard greens. So it's very important that we get that fresh and turn it over as quickly as possible. We were looking for something we can order daily, do inventory at night after we close, that way it doesn't stop us during the day. That's where Cisco came in. When I go in to talk to a prospect and introduce them to Cisco Your Way, it's a pretty easy conversation. You can order up till 9 p.m. for next day delivery. You would be routed Monday through Saturday, and there's no minimum. And I just wait for the reaction. I mean, six days a week, can't beat that. When you got six days a week and I can order up at nine o'clock at night, it's like, oh my lord. There's no limit on ordering products. Is it possible? No minimum? I could just order one chai. Yeah, like, I just need this amount of aluminum foil. Can I get it by tomorrow? You know? It's like, yeah. Past few years with the supply chain issues and getting fresh product in, Cisco Your Way helps alleviate that. Now it's on an app, it's in my pocket. You say the bartender asks for some bar pineapple juice. I can say, all right, I got it. And I don't even have to step off the line in order to get it. I mean, you can order everything from bar supplies, produce. Meat to vegetables, I mean, products, to go items, paper, cups. So, I mean, they got everything. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Cisco Your Way webinar, where we're focusing on produce. So this is our Growing with Produce. Um, we have... Um, our special guests, and we also have Chef Neil Doherty, who will be our host this, uh, I guess I can't say this afternoon because it's morning in some places. So I am going to toss it over to him, but this is our agenda. So please take a moment and review, and I'm going to pass things over to Chef Neil. we are. I did the COVID, forgot to put the uh, microphone on. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our produce get together. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I grew up in a rural community and actually worked in a market garden, uh, which uh, uh, where I come from technically is a produce farm. And uh, so produce is, you know, first and foremost, uh, most to me, I always believe in colorful presentations and produce is what gets you there. I'm very proud to be a part of Cisco and the Fresh Point family because I've actually been out in the fields and seen it firsthand. But I'm going to toss the uh, ball or grenade in any case over to two very specialized gentlemen. I've got Troy Thomas and John Greco from Fresh Point, and they will lead you in. So, Troy, tell us about yourself. Well, hello, everyone. Once again, Troy Thomas. Uh, I've been with Cisco for 35 years. Yes, I started when I was about five, I promise. Um, uh, started out as an order selector at Cisco, so plenty of opportunities at Cisco to to grow into positions, and been very uh, grateful for this company to uh, to be a part of it. Um, produce was one of those things in the beginning when I started working in the warehouse that it was like I, I I like what goes on over there, and so you know through my career I just got involved in that, and I love the fast pace, I love the problem solving, as you guys know probably on this call that um, produce is definitely one of those things that can throw a curveball tomorrow, <laughs> especially with weather. So uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, John, go ahead. Good day, everybody. John Greco, uh, not quite as many years as Troy, but pretty close, 35 years in the produce industry. Next year will be my 30th with Cisco. I grew up in the largest area of row crops, which would be lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, et cetera. 
Uh, produce for me was in my blood from the start. Uh, they say in order to be good at something, you have to have passion. And in order to be good at produce, you must have the passion for it. Uh, as Troy brought out, it can be challenging, but I think challenges are good, especially for most of us that are competitive. It makes you rise to the top to be the best at what we do. And that's what Cisco provides in produce, the best of the best. And we'll go into various reasons as to why that happens. So we'll be covering four pillars today of what makes up the program. Um, starting really with uh, what is the start of an item going into a box or a container, which are the spe specifications, pardon me, written for each of the items we do in brand. We'll cover food safety, we'll cover sustainability, and really the heart and soul of what creates integrity in our brand. It is a branded program, not a labeled program, and we'll speak to that as it relates to quality assurance. So, so who's going to take this one? So I'll start, Chef, if that's okay. Yeah, one absolutely. Of the, Just go for it. One of the blessings I was given from day one, which was November of 95 that I started with Cisco, I was really the office liaison to our quality assurance team. And quality assurance is a perfect name. It's not quality control. You need to be assured that our team is out there creating a difference between all of our competitors. Um, when it relates to the quality of our brands. And we use boots on the ground because not that it's a catch line, because it's a reality line. Right? We have our folks in the fields physically looking every single day at the product that's going into a Cisco box out of Salinas or Yuma, as well as other growing regions. Uh, but it doesn't end with boots on the ground. It really starts with boots on the ground. And that leads us into boots in the warehouse. And Troy can speak with that. Yeah, it's really important here. I mean, as as John was alluding, you know, I, I call it offense defense, and QA would probably say <laughs> they play only th only defense, but I call it offense defense, right? We have we have our our boots on the ground out in the field, and then we have our boots in the warehouse, and and each uh, site has a quality assurance uh, person or team at the site level, which when product comes in, they're checking the the, the trucks. They're looking at you know product coming off. They're they're looking to make sure it meets our spec, um, and then it goes into the warehouse. And then once it's in the warehouse, then their job is to actually go through the warehouse and open boxes, look at product, and make sure that the stuff that's in the warehouse is good to go out to our customers. And in order for it to last in those warehouses, we've got to get those temperatures down. So when you cut a head of lettuce out in the field, whether you're in Salinas or right now you're in Yuma, Arizona, your temperatures are going to range from 50 degrees to at certain times in Yuma, 100 degrees. So bringing the internal temps of those products down is key to shelf life. For Cisco branded items, we have a two hour requirement from the time that head is cut in the field until it goes into a hydro uh, cooling unit or a vacuum cooling unit. To again, essentially what it does is it pulls the warm air out of that product, injects it with cold air uh, so that as it goes on to a refrigerated trailer, off to destination and into a refrigerated warehouse, and finally into the kitchen or the back of someone's restaurant, it stays cold that entire time. Cold chain is critically important to making sure we get the longest shelf life and the freshest product. And that cooling happens again, um, I'm sorry, within two hours of the cut time but we also on branded product, in order to ensure we are turning at a reasonable rate, you're not allowed to have any branded items at the ship point for longer than 48 hours before they're put on a truck heading east. I can say a lot to this because I had the fortune to go out there and actually walk the fields and watch the selections. And I can't say enough about the right con temperature controls. Uh, I always notice it when I buy produce at the supermarket. I bring it home, I put it in the refrigerator, and it's literally, it's literally going, you know, left to center within a day or two days. So, I mean, this is really where it really boils down to making sure the product's correct. All righty, who's up next for our next slide? Food safety yes. and traceability. Now, this is massive. Th this is massive, chef. And for years now, this is a subject I don't like to speak about in the sense that this shouldn't be and will never be for Cisco a selling advantage. This is a must. This is not a competitive opportunity here. 
This is something that if you preach, you want to do the right thing for your customers, then this is ingrained in the soul of everything you do. You know, it doesn't seem like an intense program when you look at a simple bag of salad mix, but on that bag of salad mix, we've got codes on there that give us the ability to know exactly where it came from, when it came out of a field, when it came out of a cutting facility. But again, this is doing right by our customers, not checking a box. Food safety, food security, and traceability, you have to be on the leading edge or you shouldn't be in the business period. Yeah, agree 100 percent, you know, and, and and when we look at the the, the bottom uh, bullet point here and it talks about Julian dates and stuff. And it's interesting because as we talk to customers and stuff like that, it's it's interesting. A lot of people want to uh, I, I want a date on there that tells me when it goes bad. Well, the interesting thing with produce is, especially when we get into a lot of commodities and stuff, let's talk about apples. If I were to show you an apple, nobody knows how long it's been picked. Um, Right, I'm showing you an apple if you're looking at the box, but if I pull that apple out, you know, how long has it been picked for? And apples are picked once a year, right? And and we'll get into this a little bit later about, um, you know, technology and stuff like that, but they put those apples to sleep um, and then they bring them back out, right? And that's how we get that shelf life to be able to go through the year. But, you know, the the Julian date, which we, we sometimes call it a born on date um, or some people call it a manufactured date, um, that's really a, that's what really a Julian date is. So um, a lot of our products are all, or all of our Cisco branded products are Julian dated. Code. Well, I've got to say, I sold a lot of produce back in the day before I came over here. And a lot of that produce was sold to MD Anderson, which is one of the major uh, cancer hospitals in the US. And the selling point behind it was the entire HACCP program, et cetera. And the and and the wash produce that we sold up our uh, leafy greens in the uh, but are already pre-washed, and I could sell those without worrying wholeheartedly. So it's a massive benefit. And like you said, this is something that should be with every produce item ever sold. Okay, next. Okay, who's so, taking this? So I'm going to yes. defer most of this to Troy. He's been <laughs> involved in the sustainability program for quite a while, but sustainability has become kind of the new niche word for a lot of folks. And, and again, that's it's not something that should be a catchphrase, right? If, if we truly do care about the one earth that we have to do our business on, we need to take care of that earth. And it's not as simple as recycling an aluminum can or your plastics. Uh, it, it's taking care of the dirt in the right way. It's, it, crazy it seems it's taking care of insects in the right way and um, and we are definitely have a full dedication at cisco to the sustainability efforts which have so many different pillars and we're working through a lot of those i think the great thing on this is that we are leading the industry right again we're not following behind trying to ride on somebody's coattails we're doing what we should as the industry leader in food service, and we're going to allow others to ride on our coattails. But same thing as food safety, we're going to do it because it's the right thing to do, not because it helps us sell more. And I said I was going to let Troy take it, but I rambled on. So, Troy, go ahead. Well, and I'm going to probably geek out on this, so I apologize about this. But so a couple of things, there's, there's a whole bunch of sustainability here, but food waste is a, a big thing too, right? And so one of the things that we've been really looking at late, uh, lately is post-harvest technology, right? Post-harvest technology is really important. Packaging is really important to get shelf life. We've seen, um, you know, back in the day where if somebody cut something up, they'd throw it in a bag, put a twist tie on it and send it to the customer. And within hours, it's, it's you know, no good, right? It's, 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 it's not good. Um, where I, I tend to say this, we're keeper of dead things. <laughs> okay, we, once we've we've cut that uh, that produce, it's starting to die, right? And so there's some technologies out there and that we're working with. And we're we're the cool thing is we have a third party auditor that's looking at this type of stuff to verify the claims that are happening, right? The claims from these people that are all coming to us with all these different technologies. When I talked about the apples a little earlier, MC1 is a technology that has been around for years with apples to put apples to sleep, okay? They couldn't, they couldn't figure out how to harvest it or use it a different way. Well, they finally figured that out. And so we're now what we're starting to see is this MC1 that, that they use is now 
branching out to other things. And we're seeing some really good results with that, with broccoli, with grapes, stuff like that. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about, which is, which is, once again, I'm going to geek out on this, is, is if we talk about our strawberry supplier, okay? Our strawberry supplier literally has a, I don't know what they call them. I call them bug doctors, okay? But they actually have bug doctors that go in the field before, or, or they work through the field. John, correct me if I say anything wrong here. And they work through the, <laughs> there you go, there you go. But they, they look at the field, they see what bugs are in there, and then they write a prescription for bugs to eat the other bugs. I'm serious. They write a prescription to release bugs that will eat the bad bugs. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to see that they, they are going through that rather than spraying chemicals on it. They're doing that type of technology, okay? There's another one of our suppliers that actually takes waste from their processing. It's an onion uh, manufacturer. They take their waste and they've built a actual digester that creates the, the electricity to run their plant. They run their whole plant. And when they have extra, they sell that back to the power company. Now they're into technology and John and I just met with them this last week and they have a new Star Wars stuff coming, right? It is amazing. And what they have done now is they actually have a machine that can go into the fields and it lasers weeds. It kills the weeds with a laser rather than going in with pesticides and stuff like that. It actually goes in the field and lasers the weed and kills it which they're seeing really good results with that. They could be very pinpoint on it. And, uh, you know, more to come on that. It's, it's, it's very new technology. It was interesting talking to them about, you know, the person that's developed this. And, and they, they, they're at some technology guru that works for all these big companies and stuff like that. And they were literally playing around with a laser, burning weeds with it and went, wait a minute. I think I can do a bigger scale of this type of thing. So, so just a few things, uh, but sustainability is definitely important to us. And uh, there's some really cool things out there that we're, that we're um, working with. So we're taking a lot of this from Europe as well, who's been obviously way ahead of this technology because not, not only is their labor expensive, but their land mass is nothing compared to ours. So they have to, that they've really done a great job of doing that, and we're now bringing in here to the states, right? The different uh, machines for um, uh, you know, combines, etc. Right? Correct. They will have growers that go on a regular basis, especially to Holland. Holland is phenomenal gotcha. and at the leading edge of not just greenhouse growing, but on the technology around new varieties of items, on new equipment to use. Uh, definitely leading edge. And yes, our, our grower shippers spend a lot of time over there looking at uh, new innovative opportunities. So so I, I got a great question because everybody talks about the word GMO. Uh, when we talk about new varieties, that's not GMO. No, right? Sure is very similar to apples even. You know, new varieties come about because you graft one tree to another tree. You grab the strengths and the flavors of one and you bring them together, but you have done nothing to the genetic makeup of the product. So it's not a GMO. I just wanted to clarify that because that's always a uh, area of contention. So that is an excellent answer, John. All right, moving right along to our next slide. So this is probably the largest area or the area that I have the largest passion for. Um, in sourcing, I get the opportunity to meet with hundreds and hundreds of growers literally around the world when we set up our contracts on items. Um, so I, I feel as though I own the club at times, but QA is the bouncer. And QA establishes everything there is as it relates to the integrity again behind our brand. You know, farmers and what they grow, it's like their children. And every single farmer spends more time in a field than they do at home. And so we refer to those fields, like you can look at a lettuce field and the farmer looks at that like it's their children. And we all know nobody has ugly children. And what our QA does is go into your house and tell you how ugly your kids are. 
Um, you know, when we put it in our brand, we only want the best. But you hit it on the note or on the head on the last subject, Chef, on a GMO. We're not talking about manufactured goods. We're not talking about scientifically modified, perfect items and produce. There are imperfections. And QA is there to find the imperfections and keep them somewhere else. Right. So we're in the fields physically looking at everything. We go into the what we call processing plants, but I don't even like that term. It's really a value added plant where we'll take a head of lettuce, chop it up and make a salad mix. Our quality assurance folks are in there. Uh, they have decades of experience. I can tell you firsthand, I've been in the fields with a lettuce foreman and our QA pulls up in their truck and you see the expression on the lettuce foreman. He immediately drops his head or her head because they know bad news is coming. Our QA is going to tell them what they don't want in our box. So again, our quality assurance is absolutely second to none from the uh, amount of folks we have on it to the education they have, and even beyond the education to the real life experience they have looking at countless crops year over year. It, it isn't even enough to call them the best in the industry. I like to look at them as they're doing something that nobody else could do. Right, they're really that qualified, and they bring that much to the Cisco table. So they're I mean, John. Has, you know, oh, sorry, sorry. Go, go, go. John, John, how dedicated are these people too? I mean, talk about where they live six months out of the year, back and forth. I, I think that's important for people to realize that. So they, as it works for the products they're looking at, we grow really in the Salinas Valley from about Easter to Thanksgiving. And then they pack up and they move 500, almost 600 miles away to the Yuma Valley for Thanksgiving through Easter. Uh, they follow the crops, they upload their families, they do that move every single year, and they've done it ever since they've worked for Cisco. And two of the folks that we have doing it have been at Cisco longer than Troy and I have. They're absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but their dedication, I mean, similar to a farmer, and I'm not trying to make a commercial here. They're up long before the sun and they get home long after the sun is down. Um, in Yuma, for instance, they will cover daily a span of close to 300 miles. When you go as far east as Welton and Yuma, all the way up to Indio and Coachella to look at the products that are going into Cisco boxes, the amount of miles they put on cars and the time they spend going to fields is just, it's crazy. Um, it goes back to passion. You don't you don't do it because it's fun by any means because it's not fun. So there really is a massive difference between purchasing a number one and a number two, right? Absolutely. Uh, and within Cisco Natural, for instance, that's number one, but it's number one modified. Uh, we take what would be called the U.S. number one product and we uh, cut those specs in half, which sounds like we're going backwards, but if you're allowed 6% defects on a number one head of iceberg lettuce, you're only allowed 3% on a Cisco natural. So we make it very tough to be in brand and we'll we'll hit some of the brands a little bit later that speak to the grades that go into each of those. But yes, it is very, very tough to be in Cisco brand on field pack items on a regular basis, but that's a good thing. Again, this is not a labeled program. This is a branded program where our folks, they don't look at it as being Cisco. They look at it as being their last name, right? It's their name going on that box. And you leave this world, that's about all you have is your name. So you want to have a lot of integrity in that as well. All right. So now we're going to move to a trivia. Um, which one of the following are not one of the four pillows of uh, pillars of Cisco's produce program? So take a guess and put your answer in the chat. I could get away with the pillow. I say a pillow pack just to get away <laughs> with that. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. Give a few moments, see if we can get some answers in the chat before we reveal the answer. Did we get the answer? Oh, sustainability. Oh, very good. So that is not one of the pillars. 
We're keeping so, it moving. We have six yep. minutes left. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Right. We can talk rapid a lot. Fire on our brands. So we will go rapid fire. So these are our brands, and you know what? Cisco is always looking at our brands and ensuring that the name we put into the brand is relevant to today's world. We had a brand change about eight years ago on Sun, but these give you the breakdown. Natural is only for products we're physically looking at from source in the fields each day. Imperial is a number one product coming from the growers. Reliance is essentially a number two, which doesn't mean bad by any means, right? That goes back to there are defects with products. So you're looking at a choice lemon, a choice orange, a number two potato essentially, which is just misshaped. It's not a bad item. It's just not a beautiful item per se. And then recently we changed a lot of our items to ProPack, which is not a traditional or even a real Cisco brand, but we are doing some modifications to all the items under ProPack so that we can provide as much information on our selling platform as possible behind those. Okay, so we're going to move straight into another round of trivia. Which one of the following is not technically a Cisco brand? Put your answers in the chat. Great. Well done, everybody. OK, moving along. This is rapid fire produce right now. Moving right along. <laughs> OK, so Cisco produce is offered at competitive prices. Now, this is a weird way of saying it. So come on, gentlemen, correct me. The way I look at it is that you can go buy a car and look at the outside and see its sticker price is cheaper than the one down the street. But if you're not willing to look into all of the details, the schematics of that car and realize that you're looking for a value item, not a cheap item, then you're going to be buying the wrong item. What Cisco provides is a value prospect for all of our produce, not a cheap. And we don't want to be known as cheap. We want to be known as something that brings every end user a successful value opportunity. Yeah, it's really about what you get out of the box, right? How many salads do I get out of the box? Yields are important, not box cost. Yields are where it's at. Okay, next, moving along. Thank you, that was great, guys. Perfect. All right, we're dedicated to reducing the time from harvest to plate. I think we kind of covered that for the speed that we get to refrigeration from the field, right? Our ability to take that temperature down. Would that be correct, gentlemen? Yeah, you know, warehouse wise or Cisco site wise, um, we turn product in about three days. So product sits at a warehouse about three days on average across US broadline, um, which is pretty fast, pretty fast. I think the customer fast, misconception yeah. is that, oh, I can get delivery of produce six days a week. That means it's fresher. That's 100 percent not true, chef. What means it's fresher is how many times it leaves from where it's harvested. And because we're the largest in food service, we obviously buy the most. So we have more trucks leaving growing regions than any single competitor does bar none. Okay, moving along. I need delivery every day. So actually you can with Cisco your way. And uh, this, is, this is great. Uh, th this is great for produce specifically because you can buy it daily and not keep it in refrigerators that really, honestly, let's talk about our industry. We're opening and closing those doors all the time. The temperature is constantly changing. And what's the what's the difference? What happens when you open and close doors? You get condensation. And what kills produce, gentlemen? Temperature abuse. <laughs> Moisture, right? Yes. Moisture would absolutely destroy it. Okay, moving along. So specialty items, I think looking at some of our customers look at us as a broadliner and we carry more than 10,000 items at our sites in the warehouse and folks think, oh, well, you're carrying all that. You can't have specialty produce. You hit it on the head earlier, Chef, when you said we are going to cover Cisco Fresh Point produce today. Cisco is the only food service distributor out there that owns its own produce specialty houses as well. So not only does Broadline have access from growers that are uh, doing specialty items, we have access to Fresh Point who are doing a full 
uh, the full gamut on uh, various specialty items and it allows from source to get to fresh point and the next day to a broadline company. So they're not necessarily a demand status item, but you can get any item you could possibly think of in produce within a couple of days to a customer because of the actual network we have. All right, Ed, so that brings us right into another round of trivia. Can Cisco deliver every day to my business? Put your answers in the chat. All righty, yes, we can. All right, next, moving along. I think the big I thing for me here, go ahead, go ahead, Chuck. I support local, throw me on this one. <laughs> Tell me about this, because this is an area I hear all the time. Yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, this was especially the, 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 place I came from or whatever local is a, a big thing in my area. But uh, the, the biggest thing I'm proud of on this whole thing is the, is the number three comment here. And and we started a program probably geez, 10 years ago, I think, John, probably 10 years ago to help small farmers that didn't know how to get the right paperwork together. All they want to do is farm, right? They want to farm and they want to and they want to sell their goods. And, and, and we pulled this group together to, to help support them and financially support them in, in the insurance that they need, um, how to do all the documentation. And it's really helped a lot of these little local growers, small farms, be able to get into the big retailers um, because of our guidance and helping them with their audits and, and stuff like that. Um, the, the other biggest thing here is making sure that, you know, what's local to you? right? Um, everybody defines local a little different. Um, what's it mean to you? And, and um, you know, I would tell people all the time in the, in the past is that, that I'm looking for consistent brands coming in. So if somebody says, hey, yeah, we do local. Well, is it always Bobby's farm? Or do I see Bobby's farm every so often, right? And what I can tell you at Cisco we, um, you know, it's different across the whole country in the sense of what local looks like because we let the individual sites um, uh, you know, do that. But all of those individual sites really support that farmer day in and day out. They don't spreadsheet them. They don't spreadsheet. They deal with them day in and day out. And then you can go on to localcisco.com and you can see who that farmer is with all their bios on there. Tells a little bit about the farm, where the farm is, how far away it is. Uh, it's good stuff, good stuff. So I told that story earlier to you gentlemen. I, I, when I first moved down to Texas, I had a restaurant here that uh, specialized in local cuisine. And uh, I got with some local farmers in the Montgomery area and told them that I would buy what they were producing. One day the guy shows up at my back door with two pickup trucks full of red, uh, sorry, green bell peppers. And I looked at it, I go, oh my God, what am I going to do with this many green bell peppers? Well, the thing was he, had, he wasn't selling to any other restaurants at the time. So it's just a matter of being able to, you know, be able to sell to everybody. And you can do that through produce distributors. It's very hard for an individual to go door to door. But I do enjoy one thing local. I love when I go to my farmer's market in Texas and they're selling pineapples. So sometimes you have to really ask yourself, what does your area actually produce? And what are, what, when are their seasons? Because obviously, you know, they're not growing the same thing year round unless it's hothouses, but uh, most places aren't hothouses. So something to think about local. Local doesn't always mean the same thing. All right, I think we're down to the best part, my favorite. All right, gentlemen, take it away. So this is a huge initiative that we've got going right now and a giant lesson learned, unfortunately, through a time nobody likes to talk about, and that was early on COVID, as we learned that you know restaurants didn't know exactly how much product they were going to go through. Someone that was using four cases of iceberg lettuce a week prior was down to half a case. And what we did is we took that information and we went out and we're developing a different small pack opportunity that really covers a lot of bases on some of the things we went over earlier. 
You're getting better quality because these are all done at source. You're getting better quality because you literally have fewer hand touches. This is going down in many instances down a machine that's already packing it into a full case, but it's transferring the product into a smaller bagged unit. You're reducing the carbon footprint or what's going into landfills because you have considerably less corrugate being used on these products. You have a better price point for our customers. But again, this one was all designed around customer success and bringing them what they wanted, only better than what was offered before. So we're really excited about this opportunity. Uh, we've started with a few large moving items as far as volume, but again, in smaller packs. And there's a lot more to come on this in the very near future, the next four to six months. But we've seen really, really encouraging numbers on this. And when I say numbers, I mean reporting back from the customers on how much more they're liking the packs they're getting now versus what they were getting a few months back. This is absolutely outstanding as a chef because you don't always want full cases of products. You might have a specialty dinner that you just need a couple of ingredients for. Well, I think our time is up. And Aaron, uh, do you want to give them a nice farewell? All questions will be answered. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And we will promise you we will get back to you as soon as possible. Well, I gentlemen. will say this, oh. chef and gentlemen, yep. we have no questions, which means you all did an amazing <laughs> job. So <laughs> thank you so much, Troy, thank John, you, and Chef Neil. And we thank you all for joining us today for Growing With Produce. So have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you all. Thank Take you so much.